Hi, thanks. Thanks for the uh, wonderful introduction and thanks for having me here. Um, I'll jump straight to my slide. Uh, and I think uh, just wanting to interact with all of you here. Uh, just a quick question, you know, um, how many of you actually uh, do uh, heard about this thing called NFT, right? If you do, you heard about it, you doesn't know why it is it, but you're very interested to know about it, you know, uh, type plus one in your chat box, you know, in your chat box, just type plus one, yeah. It's great, yeah. You can see that many of you have heard about it, yep. Um, now, next question is, um, how many of you actually, you know, um, have personally purchased an NFT before, right? Type plus two. Okay, we do have some of you who do have NFT, um, have purchased some NFT. So it's very interesting to, to see that, uh, to understand uh, a little bit and to get to know a little bit about all of you. Um, so before I start sharing, um, I just want to put on a disclaimer here. Uh, three things. Uh, first is that uh, whatever I'm sharing here, it's not any financial advice, right? Uh, it's purely based on my personal op opinion and experiences, right? Uh, before you buy any NFT or any crypto crypto related investment, you know, you've got to do your own research. Um, number two, um, whatever that I share here does not represent Flexi Room or any company that I associated or work with. Uh, everything that I share here is really out of my personal opinion and experiences. Uh, and number three, please do not approach me for any investment advice, right? Uh, I have to apologize in advance. You know, if you try to connect with me and um, I did not reply you, right? Uh, because I'm really not a good uh, financial advisor. I, I just love technology and I'm passionate about it. A little bit about myself. Uh, I'm actually the founder and chief innovation officer for Plexi Room Limited. Uh, I founded the company and been working hard in the company for past 10 years. Uh, and recently, you know, uh, there is a new CEO. Uh, that took over my job, uh, Mark Barnett, uh, fantastic guy, great CEO, uh, much better than me. Uh, and um, that has actually freed myself up. Uh, and over the past, I would say one year, I have really, really uh, spent a lot of time in the crypto and blockchain space. Uh, and and, and that's primarily because I really have passion for tech. Uh, and um, I enjoy learning and I love change. I enjoy changing. Uh, and uh, and also, you know, uh, I also look for uh, startups like young entrepreneurs to invest in. Uh, my key criteria is that the, the founder has to be in his 20s uh, or early 30s because um, I really uh, enjoy my mentoring and uh, uh, investing in young people's life, right? <clears throat> Some quick stats, you know, uh, that I want to share with you uh, based on my research, right, that you know, uh, most of us, and on average, right, everyone in the world, on average, uh, spend about three hour and 40 minutes on mobile phones, right? That's about 16% of our life uh, on the mobile phone. So um, either you are driving or you're eating or you're waiting in the lift or even now, right, you would spend about 16% time looking at your phone uh, and you can't control it because that's just an average time spent on mobile phone, right? For work, for, le for leisure, for communication, for connecting. And 50%, almost half of the time when you're spending on a mobile phone is on social media, right? Which means connecting with people, connecting with someone, it's so important. Either through Facebook, through WhatsApp, through Telegram, um, that you want to know the person and all you want the person to know about you uh, on for the younger ones will be like TikTok, you know, uh, and some dating apps, right? Uh, I don't want to mention it because I don't want some of you indulge in it, especially you're married. <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, on the mobile phone uh, trying to interact and uh, socialize with people. And in, in US, the largest economy in the world, 70% of the teenagers owns an Instagram account, right? So, you know, you kind of betray your age if you don't have Instagram, right? Uh, if you are in Facebook, probably you are in your 30s or 40s. So uh, in Instagram, uh, that's probably you're in your 
in your young early 30s uh, and probably late 20s, right? And now the younger ones will be on things like uh, uh, Discord or even things like uh, TikTok, right? Where um, probably um, many of us didn't hear about it before, but uh, I have kind of happened to know um, my kid, you know, uh, she's probably uh, about eight years old. Yeah, eight years old. Jubilee is eight years old now. Uh, and uh, she have all her neighbors, actually they are not on WhatsApp, they're on Discord, right? And I never heard about Discord, got to know about it. And apparently it's so much powerful and so much stronger uh, than WhatsApp. Uh, and a lot of gamers are in it and young people are in it uh, because they don't, they don't need a mobile phone number. You don't need a mobile phone number to open a Discord, right? And, and it's staggering statistics from here. Uh, no wonder, you know, um, recently Facebook has announced themselves uh, to Meta, right? Uh, in terms of leveling up uh, how human would connect to one another. And they, they are strong, uh, kind of like a, uh, advocating a Metaverse, right? And they're calling themselves Meta. And I think they hold so much information and data about us, uh, each one of us, that they know, they kind of know that how human would relate to one another in the future. And, and hence, you know, uh, today's subject is really to talk about Metaverse, uh, which is the big picture. And in Metaverse itself, you know, you talk about NFTs, you talk about cryptocurrencies and many other things, right? Um, some really fleshing out some really interesting uh, um, uh, news uh, to some of you who never heard about NFT and how crazy it can be to some of you, uh, to some of us, right? Like for example, Jimmy Choo, you know, a very popular brand for shoes, right? Uh, recently um, sold uh, their NFTs. So NFT is like a non-fungible token. Uh, so what you buy actually is just an image. It's not the actual shoe itself. It's literally an image, like a, a file, a JPEG file, right? That you can see on your screen now. Uh, and But it has a way to authenticate uh, the authenticity of the owner uh, or the shoe itself, whether it's really from Jimmy Choo. So the, through blockchain, you can kind of verify whether is this really original Jimmy Choo's, right? And you can also transfer the ownership. So if I buy a Jimmy Choo now, I can sell it uh, to another person. So, you know, this, this has really, really been interesting because it, it's, it's sold out in a very quick, within, within probably minutes, it has been sold out. And it costs 13,000 US dollar a pair of shoes that you cannot wear, right? It really made me wonder, right, uh, what, this NFT is all about, right? And kind of understand because, you know, you think about it that we spend so much time on the phone and relating and connecting people. And many of you will probably have 500 friends, a thousand friends, or even 10,000 friends on your social media, right? You can kind of show your friends that you've bought this pair of shoes, right? And kind of uh, boast about your, your, uh, your, your lifestyle, you know, and communicating to them that you own a, a pair of Jimmy Choo's as compared as you to actually buy a pair of Jimmy Choo's that keep in your cupboard and probably you didn't wear it for two years, right? Because of COVID and you're hardly able to wear it. And then it can kind of wear and tear and to resell it is going to be difficult because probably not many people in Malaysia were going to buy it, right? But if you buy a pair of Jimmy Choo's, you can post it on Instagram Thousands and thousands of people is going to know that you own a pair of uh, Jimmy Choo's. And then, you know, when you decided to resell it, there's someone willing to buy it, could be any part of the world. And the transaction can happen within minutes or even seconds. Then you can use uh, that cryptocurrency to buy another pair of Jimmy Choo's, right? Um, and that's like kind of a new lifestyle for the young people where they owning a physical thing is not something uh, appealing anymore, right? Uh, because the way they would boast their success is very digital, right? Uh, unlike me, I'm a little bit old school. So, you know, I still enjoy driving fancy car and living in a big house. But unfortunately, no one, no one actually will be able to see my car now because, you know, it's MCO, right? And nobody can come to my house because it's locked down. So, you know, even if you have a bungalow up on the mountain somewhere, you know, hardly any friends will go there and visit you, right? But if you have you know, NFTs, you're able to show, you know, uh, your lifestyle to thousands, even hundreds of people. And recently, you know, uh, a famous singer, JJ Lin, uh, this is like 
couple, I think one week old news, right? He spent like $90,000 on a virtual real estate. It's kind of oxymoron because you have the word virtual and real together, right? Virtual real estate, right? Uh, and, you, and, and on that on that day itself, right, a similar piece of land was sold for 2.4 million US dollar. It's a very small piece of land. It's probably like HDB flat kind of size, right? But in the virtual world, right? But it's worth 90,000, right? Uh, because uh, the, the word real is being redefined again, right? Um, what a lot of people actually define real is something that they can see and something that they can touch. That's how the majority of the people would, would define what is real and what is not real. That's why real estate is real because you can see it and you can touch it, right? But there is a movement of changing the definition of real, right? Real is when you are able to have people and interact and socialize with people, right? Now, if you have a piece of, you have a, you have a very large property and no humans are there, that's not real. But if you have a virtual property or land and you have 30 or 40 people connecting and joining into their virtual world and then you can interact and talk to them, uh, that is real, right? So kind of have this uh, mindset of changing on what is real and what is not real, right? Uh, that's happening in the metaverse world. And, and finally, I just want to show the last example because I think this is so good, right? That uh, this image itself is called CryptoPunk, started in 2017, right? And they have only 10,000 10, uh, uh, images uh, that has different variant. Maybe the hair color is different, the, back, the background is different, or the skin color is different, or the eyebrow is different. There's 10,000 unique unique of them and each of them have identity so it's like hash one to hash nine 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 right and you know uh the latest kind of like the most valuable nft ever traded was uh crypto punk hash number nine thousand nine hundred and eight right and it was sold for 530 million us dollar okay it's not ringgit uh, us dollar right uh so it has changed hand many times and the latest transaction is at 530 million us dollar so it's also a new way of how the wealthy and the super rich, um, it's not just impacting the, 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 the young and the, um, the, 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 those who can't afford to buy like real house, so they end up buying virtual property, but it's also for the super rich that they are buying NFTs as well, right? And last one is just to share about a little bit about the news that SoftBank recently has invested like $93 million on Sandbox on a multi-billion dollar valuation, which is ridiculous, right? But, you know, uh, they are making a move because Sandbox is uh, the platform that you allows a lot of developer to develop metaverse game, right? The true Sandbox developers can actually leverage on their technology to quickly, you know, uh, build a economy, a content, you know, uh, and using a blockchain technology to kind of verify the transactions and so on, right? And where I see is that it's not just a small um, niche uh, group of people who are lunatics who are trying to understand Bitcoin, Ethereum, they are investing in these projects, but also the mainstream, right? Um, when a, a, a major tech venture cap like Soft, uh, SoftBank, who actually manages funds of um, a lot of uh, uh, traditional investors, uh, are also investing into this space, right? So interesting. So, and for myself, you know, uh, when I see a lot of these news and a lot of these interesting uh, movements in the market, um, most people will say that, no, this sounds like scammy and this sounds like not real, you know, but instead of that, you know, I really choose to learn it by investing, right? Uh, and so in, instead of investing in Bitcoin or Ethereum, which most people would do because that's the easiest way to identify, I actually started investing in a small little project, right, uh, by a group of very young people uh, and uh, they are, the project name is called League of Ancients, right? And they, they are trying to develop a game that runs on blockchain, right? Uh, and I thought that, you know, by investing and being their advisor, uh, I would actually um, learn uh, more. And at the same time, I would be able to guide them and help them in any way I can. But you know what? Uh, being advisor for League of Ancients, instead of guiding them, I actually becoming an intern, right? I actually learned so much uh, by just um, uh, spending time with them. You know, for three months, they actually uh, live and work in my house. And 
I get to mentor them at the same time, observe and learn with, with them. So I'm going to summarize it, uh, call it day one, right? Uh, and my, my, I want to call it day one because day one for a lot of crypto projects is about ideation, right? And they sell before they build. Think about it like, you know, if there's any new property launch, people would spend million to buy a property before the property actually built. They just buy it at the show house and then they pay and they sign off their life in a loan agreement. And they decided to buy a few million ringgit worth of property without actually seeing it. That's like very common in the crypto space, right? And a lot of uh, projects in the crypto space ended up as scam because they actually didn't build the project itself. They didn't complete the project itself. Um, so, and a lot of, uh, uh, and the cost of starting, uh, being a startup in crypto is so low because all you need is just a good idea and able to present the idea. And immediately, right, uh, you will kind of validate and know whether this idea is good and is it worth for you to double down, right? The second day one, I will call it is day one public, right? A lot of conventional business, you start off with a startup, then you have a seed investor, then you have a venture cap, then you have a pre-IPO, and then you finally IPO. Uh, and in crypto space, it's the other way around. You actually IPO from day one because the way smart contract work, right, is that they embed all the stakeholders' interests. So think about it your shareholder agreements, your prospectus, your accounts, your um, uh, vesting of your shares, your dividend policy, everything is embedded in the token itself. They call it a smart contract or the rights on Ethereum. For example, Ethereum is one, one way that you can actually write a smart contract. And it's all embedded in the token itself from day one. And literally, you know, uh, all the stakeholders interest, whether it's a uh, uh, investor, whether it's the end consumer, whether it's a, uh, a promoter or uh, uh, marketing people or the employees, they all share their interest, common interest in the single token itself, right? And it's really interesting for me because I realized that in this process, they actually cut off all the middlemen, right? So the lawyers, accountants, investment bankers, brokers, pre-IPO investors, you know, you'll be losing jobs, right? Because uh, we, the, the business model uh, in the crypto space, it's completely different, right? The third day one, I would say is that day one learning, right? Uh, I thought I actually had 10 years of entrepreneur and corporate experience and tech experience. I would be able to kind of value add them. Immediately, I realized that everything I learned is like the opposite. I have to unlearn everything and start from scratch, right? Because in the crypto space, um, everything is so fast. Everything is moving uh, from one to another. And because there's no middleman, there's no regulator, there's no kind of barrier for everything. The innovation and the speed of things moving is so fast. And whatever that you learn uh, six months before, it's gonna be obsolete six months from now. What more if you have 10 years of experience, it, it means nothing. And I, I start to see that a lot of people who work on the project itself, <coughs> they, could, they could be a restaurant chain owner, but they came up and they ended up as becoming a, uh, um, um, a moderator of a Telegram channel or a, a social media influencer. Uh, some of them are like mural artists. They ended up uh, drawing NFTs, right? And it's just amazing. It gives an equal opportunity for anyone to just use their gift and talent and start building something, you know? Um, the fourth day one, I will call it the day one is actually week one because in the crypto space, uh, it runs on 24 by 7, right? It's a market that runs, operates on 24 by 7 and it's very fast, right? Uh, and most of the time, uh, their they hiring is that, you know, if you take three days to think about it, you're not the right candidate because it's the time is so fast that you the moment that you join, you need to decide whether uh, you would perform and all your all your uh, kind of uh, 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 incentives and what drives you is going to be equivalent to everyone else <coughs> because it's embedded in the smart contract. So everyone is moving at a lightning speed, right? And because there's no regulation and middleman, it goes very, very fast. So one week, uh, one day is one week, one week is one month, one month is one year, right? So I'll give you an example, like League of Ancients is one of the projects that I'm advisor and I've actually invested some in them. 
they are only two two and a half two two months uh, two and a half months old right and they have like 180,000 twitter followers right 180,000 twitter followers in two and a half months that 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 kind of speed is crazy right um uh, and uh, they it, it, because once you validate the idea and there's a demand and there's there is a good idea and then you just build on it and then the investors are there it's just very fast and within a very short period of time you know today they have like 150 people all around the world working on that project right it's no longer just a small team of people in my house it's like 150 people which we don't know who they are which we don't know what language they speak but they are all around the world and they are already working in that project right and they have they share a common interest which is the token itself right and finally you know day one is global right everything that you sell like nfts or any idea or project you are serving a global market and this market is huge because today uh, the size of the crypto market cap is three trillion dollar right and that's literally uh, as big as a country's or even top five countries gdp right uh it's not that high right it's three trillion dollars of uh, market cap in that market and which means that there are three trillion dollar worth of value right um in all kinds of different project in this space think about it as a country right where uh you have all kind of people in there and all kind of talent will, will be working in that space right so it kind of remind me of the early days of Silicon Valley, right? Uh, where, you know, you have people all around the world coming there because there's brilliant idea and you have all kinds of talent and resources and funding uh, going there. Uh, and it, it's just kind of uh, um, giving me that goosebump that, you know, this is like a kind of like American dream 2.0, you know, where equal opportunity for everyone around the world that can come and can work remotely right uh without having to go there physically um so that's a quick snapshot about uh what i shared um for today's topic i'm happy to take on any uh questions that you have right um yeah over to you